This is a projectile motion question. We have a quarterback that's going to throw the ball at the very center of the field. What that means is uh, if we place the origin at the lower left uh, corner here, then the very center, the sort of geographic or center of gravity, sort of center of mass kind of a uh, um, place would be where this where this white dot is. And the quarterback is going to throw the ball from there. And so we're able to somehow measure the initial velocity and the initial height. And so um, just using, uh, neglecting, you know, wind and air resistance, we have that the acceleration is just due to gravity, and it's uh, 32 feet per second squared. And so what we're going to have is um, I is pointing in that direction, there with uh, J pointing in that direction, and so what we're going to have is the part A is asking us to determine the position function. So they want us to find um, what we tend to call R of T, the position function, space curve position function. The way we're going to get this is by starting with A of T, acceleration, and then integrating <clears throat> to get velocity, and then integrating to get position. So we have the fact that the gravitational constant, 32 feet per second, is working in the k direction. So k is coming, um, k is how far off the ground you are, so k is negative 32 uh, feet per second squared for acceleration. Velocity is the integral of acceleration, and so it's our job to integrate that vector. When you integrate a vector, you integrate component-wise, and so we're going to get then, integrate zero, you get a constant, call it C1, integrate zero again, just call it a different constant, C2. And then we integrate negative 32, and we get negative 32t. And then, of course, there could be another random constant. Call that c3. So, you then uh, plug in 0. We know what, at time t equals 0, we know the velocity is equal to 40, 35, 32. And so us plugging in 0 gives us C1, C2, C3. And so we know then exactly what those constants are. C1 has to be 40. C2 has to be 35 and C3 has to be 32. So then this gives us our velocity function. It is 40, 35, and negative 32t plus 32. We now repeat this process in order to find the position function. We integrate velocity. Um, let's see, let's do that over here. R of t is going to be equal to the integral of v of t. And so we'll integrate that vector. We have 40, 35, and negative 32t plus 32, and what we'll get out of that is 40t plus some random constant, C4, 35t plus some random constant, 
c5. Then we'll get negative 16 t squared plus 32t plus some constant c6. That's your position function. But we know the initial position. When uh, t is 0, we have that the player is at the center of the field. And so uh, with the origin place where it is, the I component will be halfway, so that's 150. The J component will be halfway, so that's 75. And then how high off the ground is the 5? Five. 5 feet off the ground when he launched it. Or she. And so that is your initial position. We'll call that R of 0. We'll plug 0 in, of course, and what we get out is C4, C5, C6. And so our job then is to set that equal to 150, 75, and 5. We'll have those constants. C4 has to be 150. C5 has to be 75, and C6 has to be 5, giving us our position function 40t plus 150, 35t plus 75, and then negative 16t squared plus 32t plus 5. And that would be the answer to part A. Okay. Now, if you want to also solve part B, we could do that. Uh, let's add another slide here. So, uh, what's going on in part B? Uh, the ball is caught at the same height of 5 feet by a by a player and uh, the player isn't in the air so the player's feet are on the ground so the ball is actually five feet off the ground um, and the question is when when the player somewhere here catches the ball is the player in bounds is the player here out of bounds is the player in the end zone where's the player at that's the question the next time that the ball is five feet high, the ball starts at five feet high. The next time the ball is five feet high, it's caught. So the quarterback launches the ball, and then it's five feet high again um, when the ball is caught. At time equals zero, the ball is five feet high, and then there's another time, T, where the ball is five feet high. And so what we should do then is uh, set this k component equal to 5. There were, and then find the time that it takes for the flight, for the ball to be in the air. Find the flight time. And then plug that flight time into the position function to see where the ball is at. That's the roadmap. Uh, let's go to another slide to work it out. We have uh, R of T is equal to 40T plus 150, 35T plus 75, negative 16t squared plus 32t plus 5 and we take this and set this equal to 5.
And what naturally happens is that these fives cancel out. And you'll have negative 16t squared plus the 32t is equal to zero. Factor out a negative 16t and you'll be left with um, you'll be left with uh, negative uh, negative 16 t gets factored out and you'll be left with uh, t uh, minus 2 so you're at 5 feet when time is 0 and it turns out that you'll be at 5 feet when time is 2 seconds and so the flight time then is going to be two seconds. The ball is in the air for two seconds, and then it's caught by the player, the other player. And so the question then becomes, well, what's the position of the ball at that time? And so we get 40 times 2 plus the 150, 35 times 2 plus the 75, and then we already know the height here is going to be equal to 5. But the real question is about the I and J. Are you in the f playing field? So we get 80 plus the 150. So we get 230. We get 70 plus the 75. And so we get 145. If we go back to the football field, if your I component is 230 and your J component is 145, that fits then you being in bounds uh, because 230 is less than that, 300, and, and, and um, 145 is less than that 150. So the player catches it um, on the, let's see here, on the what foot, uh, so yeah, two, so the drawing here isn't quite accurate. There's 70 more feet for the, uh, for the player to go, but, um, but yeah, somewhere here the player catches the ball, 150 plus another 80, so. So yeah, about halfway here, about the 25-yard line or so, and five feet from being out of bounds. 230, 145, and so it's a, it's a catch, and uh, that hopefully that answers the question. 230, 145, you're in bounds, and so that's all. I'm sorry, this is all part B. All right, if you have any questions. Comment down below or send me an email.